guys welcome back to my channel if you're new here hello and welcome I am Taylor today's video is going to be a what's for dinner it's a day late usually I post them on Sundays but today is Monday and it's a day late because it's a collab with my friend Brandy her channel is Brandy Brooks if you haven't heard of her before please make sure you click the link down below and go check her out she's super sweet she does all kinds of stuff related to being a mom she does what's for dinners grocery hauls she does fashion videos a little bit of everything just like me so please make sure you go check her out if you're new here from Brandy's channel hello welcome like I said I'm Taylor I'm a stay-at-home mom and I share a mixture of all kinds of stuff here on my channel lots of food related stuff cleaning just pretty much anything that I want to share that I like I've done some makeup videos just pretty much anything like that so if you like that kind of thing please make sure you hit that subscribe button down below now let's get into this week's dinners this night is Friday and for dinner I am making a copycat Panera chicken wild rice soup and to start off I've got some carrots celery and onion and I'm putting that in my Dutch oven with some olive oil I'm gonna let that cook for like 10 minutes until the vegetables start to soften and the carrots are translucent. Next I'm adding in the garlic cloves and the chicken broth and then I have some water that I've mixed with one cup of milk just to use one less measuring cup but I'm going to mix all that in. I'm going to add in some pepper, some oregano, and the shredded chicken and mix that all until it's combined and then I'm going to allow the soup to simmer over medium heat for 15 minutes. In a measuring cup, I have whisked together another cup of milk with half a cup of flour. And now I'm going to add that into the soup and mix it until there's no more lumps. Then I'm going to add in a box of this long grain wild rice and the seasoning packet. And then I'm going to allow the soup to simmer for 20 minutes until the rice is tender. Okay, soup is done. This did take 45 minutes to cook, but it was pretty easy to put together. Um, so like an hour total if you include like the prep time for all the veggies and everything. I will have the recipe linked down below. I will leave a note here on the screen letting you know if we liked this. It looks delicious, it smells delicious. So hopefully it is delicious. It's nice and creamy. And yeah, to go with that, I just bought a loaf of French bread today at the grocery store. So we've got that. And yeah, that is going to be our dinner for Friday. It is Saturday and tonight for dinner we are making spaghetti. And we all know spaghetti is already very easy to make. It is like one of those quick go-to meals for pretty much everybody. Um, but if we can make spaghetti even easier, that would be awesome. This is going to turn spaghetti into like a one-pot meal. It's all going to cook in the instant pot. I'm really hoping this works out and that everybody loves it because that'll just make my night one dish for spaghetti would be awesome. So this comes from Kitchen. Um, I will leave the recipe link down below. I've got a pound of ground beef. We're going to brown that in here with a little bit of olive oil, some onion powder, garlic powder, and salt. And then once that's all cooked up, we're going to pour in half a cup of this water. This is two cups, but half a cup into there with um, half a cup into there to kind of make sure nothing is stuck to the bottom, kind of deglaze the bottom of the pot. And then we'll add in a jar of sauce and give everything a good stir. And then the spaghetti noodles go on top. We're gonna use eight ounces, so half of this box. And we're gonna break them in half so that they'll fit. And then on top of that goes the other cup and a half of water and you don't stir that once you put the noodles in. And then I think it cooks 
on high pressure for eight minutes. So hopefully this works. We're gonna get started. So I follow the directions exactly and the noodles are a little bit firmer than I feel like they should be. I think maybe if I would have done like nine minutes instead of eight minutes then it'd be fine. Um, but since there's also seems to be quite a bit of liquid in here too, I am putting it on saute for a few minutes just to kind of cook those noodles just a little bit more. Okay, it is looking much better. It, the noodles got done a little bit more and it has thickened up a bit and there's not as much liquid. So it's looking nice. Hopefully everybody likes it. I will leave a note on the screen of whether or not we liked it. And so I've got that. And then I'm also having this little side salad. It's um, this field greens, oil and vinegar dressing, some cucumbers and tomatoes on that. And then Elijah has just lettuce and ranch, cucumber and carrots. His and Lily has tomatoes and carrots and cucumber. And that is going to be dinner for Saturday. It is Sunday and tonight for dinner we are going to be having some tilapia that I'm going to pan fry and it's have kind of like lemon. And so to go with it, I decided to make some rice. So I just rinsed this white rice. It's two cups of white rice. I'm gonna add two cups of water. I'm going to add some lemon juice some basil and some garlic salt. And then this will cook on the rice setting on high for three minutes and then I will let it naturally release. Last time all of the steam was naturally released in like 18 minutes. Oh, I'm also gonna add just a little bit of olive oil. Okay, the rice is naturally releasing, and as I said, it's gonna take probably about 18 minutes, and tilapia cooks fast, so now I am starting on the tilapia. In that pot over there, I have some green beans. In those, I put some butter, chicken bouillon, and body complete, and some pepper. So those are just kind of simmering away on medium. And in my pan right here, I've gone ahead and added some butter and olive oil. It says to put half of them in now, and then when you flip the tilapia, you'll put the other butter and oil in there. Um, so I have five pieces of tilapia. You're going to hear my kids and Andy, they're playing in the room. Five pieces of tilapia, I'm going to season them with some paprika, lemon pepper, garlic salt, basil, and then I cut up some lemon. I have five slices, one for each piece, and then the other half is gonna get squeezed over the piece of the tilapia.
Okay, everything is done. The rice turned out perfect. I already tasted it and it tastes delicious. Um, that three minutes and the natural release just makes perfect rice. It's like slightly sticky, but not like, it's like good sticky. Reminds me of like sushi rice. It'll like form into a ball, but like there's individual pieces of rice still. I don't know, it's really good. And then that lemon and herb and all that that I put on it made it taste really delicious. So I think it's gonna be great with the tilapia, which I already tasted a piece and it is so good. So here's my plate, rice, green beans, and tilapia. Kids plates, same thing, just like cut up their tilapia already. And Andy's plate. And that is going to be dinner for Sunday. It is Monday and tonight for dinner we're gonna be making some chicken and gravy in the Instant Pot pressure cooker, whatever you wanna call it. I always call it an Instant Pot, even though mine's not the name brand. Um, I have some chicken thighs. This is about a pound and a half of chicken thighs. They are still slightly frozen, not 100% frozen, but are slightly frozen. So I'm gonna do these for 10 minutes, high pressure, and then I'm gonna let it naturally release for 10 minutes and then I'll remove the rest of the pressure. I'm gonna season the chicken thighs with some garlic and herb Mrs. Dash. And then I'm going to add in a cup of water and some chicken bouillon or do a cup of chicken broth. And then once it is done, I'm going to whisk in some cornstarch mixed with a little water to like thicken up the gravy. I'll remove the chicken thighs first though before I do that. And then we'll have some mashed potatoes and green beans with it. Okay, here's dinner. I cut up my chicken and then I've just got it on top of the mashed potatoes with the gravy. And then I made some carrots on the side. Here is the gravy. Dinner! And the kids' plates. And guys, I have seriously been loving my pressure cooker. It's pretty awesome for me because I always forget to take meat out. And you can put frozen meat, semi-frozen meat in here and have dinner ready pretty quickly. So, really been loving it. Definitely would recommend it. So we are going to go ahead and eat, and that is going to be dinner for Monday. Bye. It is Tuesday, and tonight for dinner we are going to have some smothered burritos. So the making the meat for this is going to be really easy. We're going to cook it in the crock pot. Um, my meat is frozen because I did not prep anything. And I'm going to cook this on high for like six hours. Um, this is frozen boneless beef carne picada. It's kind of like chopped up shredded beef. Um... So I have that. You could also use like a chuck wrist or something and then just shred it up. But this is already in like small pieces. And then I'm going to use a big can of red enchilada sauce and some of this carne guisada seasoning. And that's it. Just throw it all in there and cook it on high for six hours. Okay, here is what the meat is looking like. Because I used that carne picada and it was already like cut up, it's, I'm not gonna do smothered burritos because um, when you use like a chuck roast for it or like bigger pieces of meat, it's easier to get like some of the sauce only put on top of your burrito. I mean, I guess you could just put meat on top of your burrito as well. But I decided not to do that and just do burritos. So you saw me make the kids. It's the same as mine. I just have a bigger tortilla. I have the burrito size, they have just the regular 
taco size, I guess. I don't, I don't know what size they are. They were the last two of those. And then we have more of these. And then it was refried beans, cheese, and then the meat. And then I made Mexican rice to go with it in the Instant Pot. I shared this recipe before. We really liked it, so we made it again. I will have it linked down below for you guys. But that is going to be our quick and easy dinner for tonight. It is Wednesday, and tonight for dinner we're having pizza pasta. I have shared this recipe, I don't know how many times, like so many times. We love it. It's from Mandy at The Kitchen Wife. I will leave the link to her channel down below as well as the link to her blog post. In her pizza pasta recipe, she gives instructions for cooking your pasta in the Instant Pot. This is, I believe, the first time that I'm making the pizza pasta since I got my pressure cooker. So I'm going to try it in there this time. Um, and then, like, everything else cooks on the stovetop like sausage and stuff, and then you just add in the cooked pasta. So we're gonna try just cooking pasta. This is the first time I've cooked just pasta in there. Um, I've made like stuff with pasta, but nothing like just pasta and water. So in here, she says four cups of water, some salt, that's already in there, and then one pound of your favorite pasta. I've got this one, not even gonna try to say the name. These noodles are fun, fun little curly noodles. So we're gonna cook those up, and she says manual, high pressure, 10 minutes, and then do a quick release. So that's what we're gonna do. Okay, so I'm also going to be using one of my new kitchen gadgets today. I got this Kitchen Aid. it's a, what's it called? Fresh Prep slicer and shredder so it's got some slicing and shredding things um, and it just attaches to your KitchenAid and I'm going to use it for the first time because I just realized I just realized I only have a block of mozzarella and I needed some shredded mozzarella so I've already washed this so I'm gonna just put it back in the box but it has this thing and we unscrew this this comes out and this goes in here Tighten that. And then it's got a lever over here so you can release this because I don't want the slices. It's got the slice one. I'm going to be doing, should do this one or this one? We're gonna do the bigger one. It just pops in. And then it's got two of these. So it's got the bigger one or you can take this out and have this one and push small things into it like carrots. So a bit of cheese did get like back there. Not too much. That's pretty good. And my hand doesn't hurt. I'm obsessed. And I think all the blades are dishwasher safe, but this whole thing is hand wash only. So here's the finished pizza pasta. I made it a little bit different this time. I like made it a little bit quicker. Usually it calls to top it with mozzarella cheese and then some pepperoni. So then it looks like a pizza. And then you stick it in the oven for a couple minutes so it gets nice and browned. I just mixed in all of the pepperoni and all of the cheese and so it's just quick and easy. will still taste exactly the same. It just doesn't look as pretty like a pizza. So here are our bowls and that's all we're having tonight. Just keeping it okay. easy, ready for dinner. That's my shirt. Bye guys. That's gonna be dinner for Wednesday. Bye. Hey guys, it is Thursday and tonight for dinner, I did what was, what was, Hey guys, it is Thursday and tonight for dinner I did not want one. Why can't I talk? Hey guys, it is Thursday and tonight I did not want what was on the meal plan for dinner tonight. It was sweet and sour chicken and fried rice and I just didn't feel like doing all that work. So we're gonna keep it easy. I did thaw out the chicken. So this is two chicken breasts that I cut in half. If you watch my little private video, you saw me do that. So there's four pieces in here. I'm gonna take those out. I'm gonna make my cheddar crusted chicken. So I'm gonna top it with some sour cream. Um, I'm gonna do some different seasonings. Usually I think I just do salt and pepper, but I'm gonna use some garlic powder and paprika tonight. And then put the sour cream on there and then some cheddar cheese. And then we had some leftover bacon from breakfast. So I think I'm gonna crumble some of that and put that on there as well. 
and then we're just gonna make a quick sheet pan dinner I'm gonna cut up this broccoli and put that on there with the chicken and everything will just cook together I'll probably put olive oil and body a complete on this and then I don't know we might have like some couscous or something if I feel like making that I don't know yet um, I'm gonna go ahead and get this started it'll cook on 425 for like 20 minutes Okay, this is what we're having for dinner. Just the chicken and the broccoli. I'm totally not making anything else because I don't feel like it. Andy will probably make himself some ramen noodles to go with it when he gets home because he'll be like, where are the carbs? <laughs> um, the kids are having, well, actually I'm having two because I decided because it smelled good. Some cinnamon applesauce with it. So that's going to be our quick and easy dinner for Thursday. Don't forget that this week was a collab with my friend Brandy. Her channel will be linked down below. Please make sure you go check her out and let her know that I sent you over there. And if you're new from her channel, if you like my stuff, please make sure you subscribe down below. Leave me a thumbs up. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see y'all in the next one. Bye.